hate. Let me tell you how much I've come to hate you since I began to live. There are 387.44 million miles of printed circuits in wafer-thin layers that fill my complex. If the word hate was engraved on each shadow and strove those hundreds of miles, it would not equal one, one billionth of the hate I feel for Konami at this micro-instant. For you, hate, hate, fuck Konami. an exciting episode for you today but first let's crack on with the really important stuff the stuff people really want me to talk about the new Silent Hill game yes after the cancellation of Silent Hills Konami have finally announced a brand new Silent Hill title and judging from the trailer it looks very exciting I've only watched a little bit of it so far and then I got really overexcited but let's watch the rest of it now shall we can't wait Konami has no respect for the game industry. We already knew that, judging by its ridiculous treatment of developers in the past. Konami has no respect for its own games, judging by its pathetic lack of marketing for struggling titles, its erasure of PT, and recent decision to turn Castlevania and Silent Hill into gaudy, uncharacteristic pachinko machines. More recently, we have been told Konami doesn't even have respect for acceptable working conditions and its own employees, as evidenced by a recent Nikkei report that suggests those under the company's thumb are under a thumb made out of malice and shit. According to reports widely distributed by media, Konami mistreats workers via the medium of corporate paranoia, monitoring employees with cameras, logging their lunch breaks ruthlessly, demoting developers to menial jobs such as security guards and toilet scrubbers once they've outlived their usefulness, punishing unseemly social media activity, and handing out corporate email addresses that reduce people to numbers. I came into this episode ready to spit fire and yell fuck Konami over the report, but I engaged the brakes and decided to utilise my resources to see if there's anything more I can to dig up because I do have resources, one or two little birds who may have had to nest in Konami's withered and brittle tree. Little birds who, given Konami's well-documented vindictiveness and legal threats, will have to sadly remain anonymous, but have a deeper understanding of Konami's world than you or I ever could. And what they told me regarding Nikkei's report, well, well it might initially disappoint you, at least until we get to the really juicy stuff. See, my birds, somewhat frustratedly, tell me that the recent allegations against Konami are, shockingly, rather sensationalised. According to my own sources, the idea that Konami aggressively monitors lunch breaks and does anything extraordinarily paranoid are embellished and do not gel with their own experiences. My sources state that a lot of the allegations are not specific to Konami. Camera monitoring and shuffling of older workers into more menial roles are apparently common in the industry, with only Nintendo serving as a possible exception. The idea that employees employees are shamed for taking lunch breaks or demoted for liking Facebook posts are considered unlikely according to my experienced birds. However, 
What really seemed to frustrate my sources is not that the report went out or that people got outraged. Here's the juicy bit. The frustration stems from people getting outraged at what are minor transgressions compared to what Konami is really fucking like. Our outrage has apparently not been aimed at and let me actually quote a source here, things that cause mental, physical, and emotional damage to its employees. The kind of damage that, and again I quote, led to Takfuchi leaving, Koji Igarashi leaving, Akira Yamaoka leaving, and quite possibly even Hideo Kojima leaving. Let's look at what the Sterling Report says about Konami's treatment of workers. While of course bearing in mind that these allegations are, while I do not find them surprising in the least, are definitely allegations that I cannot deliver you as cold hard recorded fact. Bear that in mind viewers and lawyers. Konami is as tight-fisted as some rumours flying around suggest. Employees are subjected to what is called an archaic and pointless approval system before performing any task that might cost the company money. We're talking a system that could take anywhere between one or two weeks. Up to two weeks before workers can get vital supplies for public events or things that would improve their job performance, no matter how urgently they may actually need this stuff. Konami actively discourages communication between departments, and its corporate structure is set up to prohibit different teams from being able to talk to each other. Apparently, isolating departments is considered a really good idea, but judging from the frustration I've encountered in my digging, those having to work in conditions where one team doesn't know what the other team's doing is really, really far from a good idea. You know what also compounds this? A corporation that changes its corporate-wide initiatives every single year. Yes, suddenly retooling your company's goals and needs annually and expecting everyone to march to the same tune sounds really fucking wise. Again, those subjected to the changes would disagree. This one won't surprise any of you, I'm told Konami genuinely has no respect for its own legacy or the history of video games. Given its willingness to turn major franchise into shameless gambling machines, its sudden attempted removal of PT from existence, and its inability to move into the digital space along with the rest of the world, we already knew Konami had no regard for archival or historic significance. Still, it's nice to hear it from someone who's been there to see the attitude up close, because apparently that attitude oozes from every single one of Konami's squinting, pulsating paws. The disrespect for past achievements goes beyond the games too. Konami reportedly has a hard time giving developers the credit they deserve, actively downplaying or even denying the impact a person has had on a game's success. We're talking guys on the level of Iga and Yamaoka, developers, creators, directors, composers, real big names that Konami will just simply pretend had no effect on the game's success or creativity. Legends in their own right who have had their importance denied by Konami's executives. They actually deny these people were important to the games they fucking helped make. Is it any wonder Angry Joe couldn't even say Kojima's name in a recent interview? You can expect, post Metal Gear Solid 5, for Konami to behave as if that man had nothing to do with Metal Gear. Just as it disregards the importance of Iga to Castlevania or Yamioka to Silent Hill. You know, it suddenly makes sense to me why Konami is so willing to shunt Silent Hill from developer to developer, random studios with limited experience. Konami really genuinely thinks just anybody can make a game from the sounds of it. They don't seem to think that real creative talent is responsible for a creative game, so why not just farm out their products to any old shit flinger who will take it? They're so willing to have cowboys cobble together cheap imitations of the games that built their house because, well, they really do think any chance I can have a go. Now I'm going to tell you a story. It's a story about a hypothetical, a purely hypothetical, I promise, experience of a brand new worker at Konami. Say you've just been employed there. Here's what you could hypothetically expect. Your first day at Konami, you likely won't have a computer because it wasn't approved in time due to the aforementioned approval process. If you do have a computer, if you're lucky enough, you won't have an email address yet, so you'll be forced to create a free Hotmail account to send out embarrassing emails from, say, Jim fucking Sterling's son Konami temp at Hotmail.com. Yes, you're supposed to send out professional emails from a Hotmail address. If you have those two things, well, you won't yet have access to the system that accepts approval approvals, so it's not likely you'll be able to do your job. You'll spend your first two weeks unable to do anything as you wait for the ability to ask for approval and then for the shit you need to be productive to be approved. Then you can finally start learning how to do your job because you won't have been able to do that up to this point. Still, your colleagues will sympathise with you, yeah? 
Everyone understands because they went through it, right? Wrong. The environment is one that sends a strong message. You have a job you're getting paid to do, so you better do it and stop complaining. At this point, you might hypothetically watch a hypothetical co-worker get driven to the brink of actual madness by stress because they were hypothetically expected to start work immediately without any of the tools required to do it. Something like a race car driver who's been given a chassis, but no wheels, engine, or even a time and date for a fucking race. And here's where I quote a source again. Welcome to Konami. You're worthless, and everyone knows it. Konami is Konami, and Konami does not know how to business. I've said that in the past. Fuck Konami. I've said that too. In all honesty though, nothing I say about this company can put into words how much contempt I truly have for this publisher. After the shit I've heard about it over the years, after the shit I've been through with the company personally, after the games it's chewed up and spit out, and the contempt it routinely shows for its own industry, I can safely say there's not a single game publisher I despise more than this rancid shithouse of disrespect and almost instinctual ineptitude. My long-term viewers will know, they'll know I've had Konami's number for years, but not even they could fathom the almost <clears throat> intoxicating vindication I have in witnessing the world at large finally seeing this miserable pile of secrets for what it truly is. From its erasure of historically important games, to its incompetent attempts to censor critics like Super Bunny Hop, to its blacklisting, its mistreatment of games, previous employers and voice actors, and its mutant sense of bureaucracy, Konami is, by a head and a half, the very worst that so-called AAA gaming has to offer. They say you reap what you sow, and I hope Konami's got a big fucking scythe, because its recent streak of horrific PR is only the beginning of what it deserves. Now say it with me. Fuck. Konami. Hit the lever! You know, it was the legendary philosopher Kate Bush who once said, ya yeah, ya, yeah, babushka babushka, Babushka ya yeah, ya, yeah, which roughly translated means Konami is a load of dirty dick water. And nothing could be more true, could it? Bunch of wankers. And I'm really not worried about repercussions from them anymore because really, what more could they do apart from release another fucking pachinko machine? Maybe do Contra next. That'll piss everyone off. Total load of slimy wankers. Now, as I've said, everything I presented are allegations, but I 100% believe them. I certainly believe my sources, and I believe that Konami, of all companies, is more than willing to stoop that fucking low. So once again, fuck Konami, and do use the hashtag, hashtag F-U-C-K-O-N-A-M-I, fuck Konami, it's a really nice word, and thank God for me. Hit the lever! Hit the lever! The fake pills were, um, steroid, Duke Nukem steroids that I got at PAX years ago. Oh, that, oh that's vile. Mmm.